the great commissioning. Go out to the whole world and preach the good news. Well, you wouldn't have expected that after Good Friday from some of the gang that Jesus gathered around him. Remember Peter? Anybody remember what Peter did or didn't do when somebody said, I think you know Jesus, don't you? You're one of him. Anybody know what he said? I am not. I am not. So this man, Peter, whom Jesus chose for this enormous job, look, he said, no, after three years, three years. But something happened to him. Something happened to him that changed him completely and utterly. I think most of you know what that was because most of you have experienced it. You've been in love. Do I hear an amen? It's not much of one, is it, Deborah? <laughs> They're a little shy at times. But of course, that most beautiful gift that the human heart longs for is the very way that it was revealed to Peter. Peter, who denied Christ. So we say as Catholics, that's a really terrible sin. You really can't get any worse than that. But as we know, that there's no sin beyond the heart and the tender mercy of God. Because God's love is for all people. Hence, the great commissioning. Go out to the whole world. And we might ask, how did it happen? Because like all of us, there have been times when we've fallen in love. And when we've had that love, sealed and confirmed for us and that love was sealed and confirmed by the risen lord deborah i'm sure you've heard me over the last few weeks referring to jesus borrowing from james allison the term the forgiving victim so not like any normal victim who comes back i'm going to get back on with you peter after what you did but no a forgiving victim. So in the risen Lord, they may met the most perfect act, an experience of love. And sometimes, when we say farewell, perhaps either at the end of decades of marriage, or we just say farewell because the person we love is going away, we often have an experience of them. We know there's something connecting us. Even if they've gone to their maker, even if they've gone off on a trip, we know that there is something connecting us. And we know how on earth would the church have survived and lived up to its great commissioning if it hadn't been for the one whose love is constantly and perpetually poured out because you know what we clergy have done to the church, and yet it still goes on. It still continues through the love and mercy of God and people like each and every one of you who are filled and touched with that love. And so what we believe in, Deborah, what we believe in, Gabby and Christopher, is a God whose love is endless. Endless. So Peter, because of this love, turned into this amazing preacher. And it wasn't just his words, but it was his actions. That he too, like his master, like his beloved, was able 
to bring people back to life, was able to heal. And then we have St. Stephen. St. Stephen was the first martyr. And he preached, Jesus crucified and risen. That got him into a lot of trouble. It got him stoned to death. But even as he was being stoned, we, we, the words, his last words are recorded. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And this is the clincher. Don't let their sins be held against them. So they too were doing a ter committing a terrible sin by putting to death one of God's chosen. But he still, like the forgiving victim, had love and mercy in his heart. And we have Paul. We know what he did to Christians. But the experience he had on the road to Damascus was to change him forever. So instead of putting Christians to death, he preached Jesus crucified. And so my hope and prayer is that each and every one of us during these days of COVID and well beyond, that our hearts will be touched so that we'll be able to see each other, not in fear, but in love. That we too, will try to get into the very shoes of another human being. Because really, even when we look at colour, even if we look at what makes up as human beings, when we dare to sit down with another human being that seems so different to us, and we share food and perhaps a drink, we discover we're really quite the same underneath. That's my hope and prayer that we'll have the courage, the courage to respect the dignity of all people. We'll have the courage to reach out. Don't let six feet keep us apart forever. But let us draw near to one another and to God because of this great commissioning to know the one who suffered, died and rose again. I used to get very confused as a young priest some might say I'm getting more confused. But wherever he is, and we like to think of him as ascended into heaven, well, he's the same one who went down into the bowels of hell. He's this one who's sent us out into the world not to be alone. And so the God we celebrate is a God who is with us always, always, always. Yes, until the end of time. Please like, subscribe or comment below.